Right, I can see a few of you coming in now. Uh, evening all. Liash be here, Motocross and Spear Memories. Uh, just going to do my thank yous first before I bring my guest in this evening. Uh, big thanks for the support to Simon Pardo of White Eagle Finance. They give quality financial advice for pensions, mortgages, investments and protection. Check his website out at www.whiteeaglefinance.co.uk. You can quote myself, Lee Ashby, or Motocross and Spear Memories for free advice with Simon. Big thanks to the MX legend Stefan Everts with his S72 Gin and Vodka brand. Check his website out on www.s72gin.com. Also, big thanks to Lee Owen of Owit Developments. They specialize in supplying turbochargers to a global customer base covering motorsport performance and aftermarket and OEM sectors. Check his shop site at www.owenturbos.com. Big thanks to Terry Smith, uh, painting and decorating in Swindon. Uh, you can call him on 079-61537-505 for any of your needs in the southwest. And also big thanks to Craig Tripler of Jardine Conservatories. Check them guys out on www.jardineintalford.co.uk. Also proud sponsors of Mr. Luke Becker. Right then, people. Uh, I can see my guest is uh, waiting to come on, so uh, I'll get the video going. Evening, James. How's it going, buddy? I will get my video going and uh, we'll get this chat going. Here we go. Mikhail. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you. Do you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you good, buddy. Good. Good to get you on. How, how are you? Yeah, all fine here, this end. Sweet. I appreciate your time, mate, doing this. Yeah, no problem. I'm happy to be on, and uh, it's not often anymore that uh, I'm invited to this sort of things but uh, uh what is it five years ago now i stopped and uh it's been quiet ever since but it it's sort of this year really that i've done an interview before with a polish uh newspaper okay yeah. that was quite nice too yeah and then you uh, yeah i did uh your brother a couple of weeks ago pk yeah that was cool as well obviously mm. uh all us guys, obviously myself, have been in the UK. Remember you guys well, at Wolves. Uh, I know you went on to uh, Lakeside as well, but obviously you're Wolves legends and still are. Yeah, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, you are, mate. Very much loved over in the over here in the UK. That's for sure. I've been speaking to a lot of people, uh, the supporters that will be checking this out, whether they can do it live now or later on. They'll catch up with the recording of this later on. Mm. Um, so, right, Mikael. Uh, so, uh, what have you actually been up to then since your Speedway days? So, you said it's been five years now. Yeah, um, yeah. After obviously, if it's it's quite hard to uh, stop something once it's been your life for that long. Mm. So to get into a normal lifestyle uh, again is uh, can be challenging. Mm. So I decided uh, uh, the last year I rode that I was gonna continue a little bit in the sport just to help me sort of. Uh, get back into a normal kind of lifestyle mm. and uh, so I did that and that worked quite good for me so I, I help out the uh, Dakarna club yeah. you know in yeah. Molilla mm -hmm. help them a little bit uh, with the track during the meetings and stuff and uh, <laughs> so I keep involved that way apart from that I'm not uh, very involved in other ways, like, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, 
but it's nice to, you know, at obviously it's normally at meetings that where I see riders and stuff, so it's not the best time to chat with people, but it's it's nice to say hello and and stuff like that and keep part of it. So that that has worked good for me. Yep, yeah, sweet. Um, how did you actually get into Speedway then, Mikhail? And what was your sort of earliest memory of the sport? What sort of bike did you get when you first got a bike and stuff? First of all, I was, uh, you could say I was born into it because my father uh, rode as well, not uh, on a high level or anything, but he started his career uh, quite late. He was 27 years old, and I think that it was... Uh, when could that have been? Maybe end of 60s or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was, uh, they had like a party together with his mates and whatever and just decided that, oh, that seems like a nice sport. So they built a, a track and everything and started the team. And, and then they started to ride for fun and made it up the league tables and stuff. And uh, But then he... he uh, he quit that and my brother started instead. Uh, and it, it was from there really. So I, I was at Speedway meetings when I was hardly walking. Mm, very so young, yeah. uh, it's been the, the whole life. So what sort of age were you when you sort of got good into the Speedway and then you come over to Europe and that, and when you realize you can make it as a career? Type uh, of well, because we have uh, in Sweden, we have that ATCC uh to begin with, and uh, you can start that but the year you're 12. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, in 85, uh, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And I struggled most of the time, so I wasn't any any good at that. It was maybe my last year in the ATCC, I started to pick you up a little bit and mm -hmm. start to go better. But then uh, come 89, uh, I went into the 500cc class and um, straight away there I felt more at home with the bike and everything and uh, it worked really well from the from the beginning there and I, I think I, I was in the elite league team for the first meeting that first year in the in the springtime. And I believe, uh, from what I can remember, our top score, it was a away meeting uh, against Per Johnson and uh, Jimmy Nielsen and those guys in Stockholm, it was the meeting. Mm -hmm. At a track called Gubbengen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the, and from then on, it, it worked pretty good for me the whole time. And uh, I started to get... Uh, contracts uh, sent over from England already at the age of se uh, 16. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I, I, I waited patiently mm -hmm. uh, until I uh, felt a little bit more experienced and I signed with Wolves uh, just like my brother. Brilliant. Awesome. And then it all started. <laughs> but did he tell you about his? Because I, I, I was with him when he came over the first time and he was going to sign for Reading. Yes, he did tell me. Which was, uh, I believe it was a, a Swedish uh, heritage there. With, uh, yeah. or she, I think the promoter there, she liked the Swedes. I think. Pat Bliss, yeah. I think it mm. was, uh, what was there? It was uh, Jan Anderson, Tony Olsen, uh, Perry Olsen. Yeah, her. Her, yeah, there's a lot. Her was, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. Um, I've had quite a lot of people ask me this, uh, Max. Uh, someone's just come on now on YouTube as well. Peter and Dorothy Bowles has put, sorry to be rude, but did you change your name to Michael Ma Mikhail Max from, because you was obviously Mikhail Carlson as well as Peter Carlson, wasn't it? So yeah. And Magnus Carlson. Did you just go back to your mum's maiden name? Is that what it was? Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. But it was, I, it, was um, it was something that I, had with me for a long time, obviously, in my life. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I used to idolize my uh, uh, my mom's brother uh, a lot when I was, 
what do you call it? Um, uncle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My yeah, uncle, yeah. he was, uh, you know, I idolized him and uh, he, he he made wheel it because he's, he's never, he's always been a bike rider, mm -hmm. but only um, never competing or anything. Okay. But I remember he used to pull wheelies and stuff, and it uh, was it was good. And his name is Max, so I thought I'll, one day I'll I'll be like him. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So uh, your first but it, it never. I remember when I when I did do it. It mm. it uh, it wasn't very popular in England. <laughs> and, That's uh, why they all keep asking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it's still hard for some people to to get over it and uh, mm -hmm. call me. They still call me Carlson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, it was the same in Sweden, really, and perhaps in Poland also. But in Poland, you don't understand what they're talking about, so it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was brilliant. I got uh, James Brown here. He just put, "Do you still see Tony Rickardson at all?" Uh, I have seen him uh, during the Grand Prix in uh, in Molilla because mm -hmm. I'm involved at that uh, meeting in Molilla. I'm involved uh, with the track then too, mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't had a chance to uh, speak to him. And uh, no, I haven't been in contact with him. He's been appearing though uh, lately quite a lot on TV and stuff. So I've uh, sort of caught up with him there a little bit. And see what he's up to, and, and yeah. Uh, Peter and Dorothy Bowles on YouTube did say as well about the name change, and they put "Yep, you are loved." So there you go. Oh, thanks very much. Still loved. You got uh, Adam uh, Poulter here. Put nice to see you, buddy. What a true gentleman. See, you've still got a bit of the black country accent. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. I, I feel a bit rusty with that. Uh, I don't speak. <laughs> Uh, any more English. <laughs> what was that like when you first went over then? That must have been a bit of a shock, the old accents. and Yeah, it's... it's. But you... Uh, did PK show any of the black country? Could you hear yeah, it? On yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, when you spend a lot of time, I spent a lot of time with uh, Pete Adams, so you mm -hmm. sort of start to speak like those a guys a little bit, yeah. uh, <laughs> little bit off. that's the only people you you see yeah. really is the people involved with speedway and uh, mm. yeah but it was um, yeah great times for sure yeah. uh what sort of, did you have any riders that you looked up to and idolized when you were young did you have any riders that yeah when i was really young we used to do um, me and my uh, me and Peter, we used to do uh, Cycle Speedway. Ah, yeah, yeah. And he used to be Peter Collins, and I was Michael Lee. Ah, yeah, and yeah. So that was the first. And then obviously it's all the usual names, you know, like Bruce Panel and those guys, Eric Anderson, Hans Nielsen. All those guys were amazing, you see. You might like this then. Uh, Steve Irwin, you might see in the background, I've got uh, Bruce Pennell and uh, Eric Gunderson that Steve Irwin uh, does his drawings. And yeah. I've got a nice one he sent me over here. You'll like this one then. Hold on, if I can just get it. Oh, I might just wait, I get it. There you go. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful, eh? It's a Westlake as well. Yeah, it's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Michael Lee. Yes. So that's pretty cool that you used to uh, like to pretend to be Michael Lee as well. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but then when you start to rise against the guys, you know, you got to try and forget about that and yeah. uh, try and uh, behave like a proper sportsman and try and That's go it. out and uh, give him a good match. Uh, Adam Poulter, uh, watch, um, I'm just watching the Wolves match at Peterborough tonight. Do you still watch the English racing at all? I don't follow a lot of Speedway. Yeah. Uh, no. Apart from what I do mm -hmm. in uh, with Dakarna there, so mm -hmm. I follow the team there, and uh, that's about it. It's a you know, I, I don't know. It, you sort of lived with it so close for so mm -hmm. so long, mm -hmm. and because uh, at the end of my career, I 
I started to work with engines as well. Mm -hmm. So I was doing um, a bit of service jobs and stuff for the uh, uh, lower leagues in Sweden. Oh, right, okay. and I did my own engines and rolled them in the Elite League and that and the Allsvenskan and, uh, and uh, stuff. And then the plan was I was going to keep going when I stopped uh, my racing career. Mm -hmm. But somehow I lost... Uh, I sort of lost it uh, when I didn't compete myself. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's natural or, mm -hmm. or not, but mm -hmm. uh, and I feel the same now when I I don't watch it that, and follow it that hard. Uh, mm -hmm. It's probably because you've been into it so much, and mm -hmm. and then you lose the the competitive edge. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it sort of dies a little bit, uh, mm. I feel. But um, obviously, it's nice to I follow the Grand. I see the Grand Prix, and that, yeah, but uh, I don't have time to follow uh, all the leagues that yeah. go goes on and, uh, mm. and stuff. Okay, cool. Um, can you uh, sort of uh, who were the sort of toughest opposition riders? Uh, if you remember being obviously in the British League days. Obviously, it was a hell of a lot of good competition around uh, in that area. Yeah, it was a lot of uh, it was a lot of riders that mm. was hard to be. It, it was England was special because it was so many meetings at the same track, so every top guy in their team uh, they they can hone the skills and and uh, be really well prepared on their home track. Uh, and the same goes for me and my brother. We used to obviously love riding above Rampton. So, mm. uh, yeah, it's the, I, I can't pick. So, who can I pick? Yeah, I, thought, I think Peterborough. It, it was obviously uh, Jason Crump and uh, Ryan Adams, uh, Ryan Sullivan. Was hard to be. Yeah, yeah, he, he was hard. Mm. And then Lee Adams, obviously, mm. uh, excellent uh, league rider and mm. individual rider as well. But yeah. in the leagues, I think all of his career, he scored uh, a lot of points. Mm. So he was extremely hard to beat. Yeah. And then uh, when you came down to Eastbourne, Martin Dugard, mm. obviously, but there was a lot of guys in that team that were really hard opposition, you know. It was uh, always there. elbows and uh, and stuff flying <laughs> around. So yeah, that was yeah. Dean Barker and not David easy. Morris and the boys. Yeah, yeah. Not easy, not easy. Uh, no, sure. They were all track specialists there as well, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Bit of a trick track. Um, Nathan Monday put Mikael. So, how many brothers do you have that also rode speed uh, speedway? <clears throat> uh, we have um, also the younger brother Magnus, Magnus. Uh, and he did ride in England as well, mm -hmm. uh, but it was in the in the lower league there, mm -hmm. Premier League. Yeah, uh, and he was he he rode for Edinburgh, I think. Mm -hmm. And then he had some other spells. There was a track that came up, wasn't it, in the top league as well? Which was that? Mm. Uh, someone I know. Someone I know. Uh, someone I can't remember. Someone I know on here. How is uh, Magnus? Do you see much of Magnus and Peter at all? Do you see those guys much? Uh, I live on the east coast of Sweden, and uh, my. Uh, rest of the family live on the west coast uh, or well not on the coast but sort of on the west side of sweden mm -hmm. uh, so it's uh, about three and a half hours distance mm -hmm. and obviously with uh, what we've been going through uh, lately mm -hmm. i haven't had a lot of chance to see the family mm -hmm. unfortunately but uh, uh, i do see uh, my uh, Peter, mm -hmm. I've seen him uh, the most yeah. out of the family because uh, obviously he was team managing uh, last year mm -hmm. for uh, Dakarna and then uh, 
he's doing a little bit of uh, TV TV work as well now. Uh, I did because uh, before his interview a few weeks back, he was uh, sending me a couple of Snapchats of uh, the snow and stuff. <laughs> yeah, of oh, who? Oh, oh. Uh, PK oh. was he was sending me some uh, Snapchats of him in the snow uh, before oh, he was right. interview. Yeah, so <laughs> that was only a few weeks ago. Now we have got like a heat wave here in England at the minute. Mm. What's it like there? Yeah, oh, it's uh, it's pretty hot, mm. uh, and it's gonna get. Uh, uh, more so uh, later this week, I think we uh, we're gonna have a heat wave here too, and it's really dry and whatever. So yeah, not bad. Yeah, I've got uh, Keith here on YouTube. He put, does Mikael remember Krista Lofquist, and did he watch him as a youngster? Yeah, I, I both. Uh, because my uh, because PK is uh, four years older than me, mm -hmm. he was more in that age group, I think. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and obviously he, I was at those meetings and uh, saw them ride together. And I think that maybe they were even in the under twenty ones together in that team, okay. in the national team, yeah. in in. Yeah, so I remember him, and he was a fantastic rider, mm. rider to watch. He rode for, was it King Slim he rode? Yes, I think he did, I think. yeah. I remember that, yeah. 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 And, uh, and then later on, uh, uh, I used to race against him too, I'm, I'm sure. Mm. And, and his home track in Sweden was on the island in the middle of the Eastern Sea, or whatever you say in English. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a special place. You used to fly to the to the island and have one meeting and then go back. Nice. But uh, I think that, that track is gone now. I think is it gone? Is it? Yeah, I think so. What is the uh, Swedish Speedway? How's that going at the minute? What's the? Is all the tracks? Has there been any tracks closed or anything like that? We're having obviously. You probably roughly know that there's been a lot of tracks closed in England over the years. Um, the not so many. I mean, there's yeah, there's been a few that's mm. been has closed down. But uh, I think the the biggest thing is that not enough young riders come through in the sport, mm. and I think it's it's getting it's on the verge now of being a big big problem because uh, we can't get youngsters to start with speedway and that's unfortunate and uh, uh, so i think it, I'm, I'm not exactly sure about the figures but i think it's like 80 90 licensed riders all together or something like that in sweden mm. so you got the elite league which is is good yeah. but it's built around uh, foreign riders a lot of polish riders so it's more like a professional uh, league and then uh, the rest is for the for the you know young swedes but uh, there's not many of them anymore uh, mm. sad to say mm. how is it in england uh, yeah, well, obviously a lot of them are closed. It was going right down the numbers in, obviously, in the Elite League. Uh, they keep obviously changing the name of the league, but yeah, the top league, as it were. Um, yeah. And then obviously Swindon they were the reigning champions. Uh, that's my home club and hometown. And then obviously they've had the whole season was wiped out with COVID. And then this year, Swindon decided against running due to the COVID. Obviously, they're still now, even though they're running, they're on restricted uh, crowds, obviously, and stuff. Uh, yeah. Quite a few of them have been saying about how hard that is to run in that situation. I think Birmingham in the lower league have just sort of stopped their racing for now until the restrictions lift a bit so they can have more crowd. Mm. So not, it's yeah. not been great, yeah. Yeah, it's it's for sure it's tough times. And I think at the moment now in, in the elite league in Sweden, they can bring in 500 people mm -hmm. in the crowd. And uh, obviously... That ain't enough to, no. to pay for it all, you know. And, yeah. So it's uh, unfortunate, but we, we'll see. I mean, uh, yeah. one positive thing that might come out of it is that hopefully uh, B 
people will come back and mm. want to see live sport when it starts to open up again. So yeah. let's hope for that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, we've just had Boris has come on t- tonight in the UK and said that they're uh, delaying the uh, delaying it for another month uh, with the no wow. mask situation. So still, again, still going to be another month or so until we can have like no no masks at all and mixing and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, still a bit oh. to go. Yeah, a bit to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously you come over to the UK and rode. You rode in Poland, obviously as well. Um, did you ride in Denmark as well in the Dem- Danish league? I did ride in Denmark, but mm. it was only a short, short spell there in yeah. the beginning. Uh, I think maybe 1991. Mm. I was over there and I did a few meet, league meetings in Denmark. So that was Just Wednesday to build Wednesday. on some experience, but uh, mm. no. Then uh, England obviously came out there in 1993, and that's really when it started to to uh, get sort of serious professional. Mm. And uh, obviously with the amount of meetings that was in England, uh, you know, you get quite busy quite quick. Mm. So, what, was, what was that like, uh, having obviously like brothers, um, not only having brothers in Speedway, but actually being on the same team, winning stuff together was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was nice. Mm. It, was, it was nice, obviously, and uh, good, obviously, for me to uh, to have him uh, pipe the way a little bit before me, and uh, it makes it all easier, for sure. Uh, yeah, so that, that was good. And also to have a, a little bit of family over makes it easier as well. Yeah, best of so, all. Yeah, it worked good. And uh, But on the track, I mean, yeah, all, that also worked good for us. We could keep it sort of – it was hard racing. We just mm. regarded each other as any other rider, really, and uh, just got on with it. Uh, obviously, the, when we you know someone – so well mm-hmm. it's uh, quite easy to you understand what they're going to do and things like that it's mm-hmm. you can ride hard without it getting serious yeah that's good as well that's, mm-hmm. uh, nice to have uh, i know a lot of you speedway guys sort of rode uh, motocross and stuff like that for training in the winter and, and and also for fun what was your sort of training regime like did you do that in the winter did you ride motocross bikes to keep fit yeah we did that a lot we, mm-hmm. we did uh yeah, I I used to ride a lot of motocross for at one time of the career, but then I, I sort of lost it a little bit uh, towards the end. Uh, uh, but yeah, a lot of motocross riding. It, it was always good. You you got race fitter, I think, mm. from that rather than it. It don't matter sometimes how much you you exercise and train mm. once you get on a bike you can still get uh, you know tired quick mm. so i think motocross helped me that way that you know if you were on a bike you, you felt a lot looser and stuff and uh, yeah it was great training for sure um did you I used to have any uh, certain uh, engines that you favored over the years that you had did you have any favorites i know a lot of the guys sometimes give their engines nicknames and all sorts of stuff goes on i don't yeah. know if you had it <laughs> yeah we had we had some obviously at Wolverhampton we had uh, special engines there every year that worked for that track and yeah. and that sort of thing and uh, um but it, it it keeps on you can't ride an engine for so long you know it eventually it becomes scrap and then uh, you gotta find your new favorite so <laughs> now maybe not as much as some other riders uh, but uh, yeah for sure you you get your favorite that that's for sure yeah you know? I got uh, did have a question down as this, but it uh, looks like uh, Carl uh, Brevitt. I just looked online to see what his name was because it don't come up there. He's put, who did you enjoy team riding with the, the, the most at Wolves? 
I think it was uh, PK if that, that yeah. sort of worked the best anyway. But I mean, Sam was a great team rider yeah. and uh, other riders too. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, but obviously the most five ones I've probably scored with my brother, I'm sure. Mm. But it, it was it was nice to ride with Sam. I remember that it was fantastic as a mm. as a team rider. Yeah. And um, who else was special like that? Um, who do you regard yourself as the best Just team rider? There. Did you have um, did you uh, did you ride with Ronnie Corrie much at all? I can't remember if you. Yeah, yeah, I did uh, ride with him, but I don't know how many years it was. I see that pit team picture there. You had uh, was Nicky Pedersen was there when he was there. Yeah, the walls as well. Jerry Stansel on that as well on there. Uh, is that Justin V. Monberg? Has he changed his name? Yeah, Craig Richard Taylor, Taylor Richard George Stansel. Richard Jewell. Oh, Richard Jewell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think one of the best team riders I've seen team riding wise was probably Lee Adams. He definitely um, coaxed a lot of the Swindon guys around, I say. Yeah. Sure. Mm, team rider wise. Definitely. Yeah, Dor Dorsey, Dorsey was uh, fantastic. Yeah. Mm, he was very good, wasn't he? As well. Mm. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, who else is there? I think Ty can be very good at that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who else do we have? Definitely Sam. It's, like you said, Sam Malenko was definitely. Uh, yeah, that that some was teammates. some fantastic. I mean, him, him and Ronnie Corey at Wolverhampton. Yeah. That yeah, was a special a, thing. A bit like you. And pairing. Pairing. Yeah, very formidable mm -hmm. pairing. Yeah. I think when um, Darcy Ward and Chris Holder were together. In that stage at pool together, they were oh yeah, pretty special. Yeah, Chris together. is uh, Chris is good as well. Yeah. He's a good team rider for yeah, sure. I think, I think everyone called him the Turbo Twins at the time. I think they called him. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> sure they raked in a few points. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> yeah. Um, what were your sort of favourite tracks in the British uh, league then, uh, Mikhail? Did you, and uh, was was there ones that you weren't too keen on in the British league as well? Uh, yeah, I think it was. I, I didn't. I didn't like uh, Bellevue too much. Mm -hmm. I sort of struggled there a little bit. Uh, mm. Quite slick, from what I can remember, mm. and uh, a little bit bumpy, sort of thing. Quite narrow. Mm. We're we're talking obviously now about <clears throat> the old yeah the old Bellevue one. that I used to know yeah. Uh, I think the new one looks mm. fantastic, right? Mm. Definitely, mm. yeah. Looks good racing yeah. lines, fast. Uh, but uh, the best track that I thought was Kings Lynn. Mm. Uh, that was always a fantastically prepared race track. Mm. Always smooth, mm. quite grippy. Mm. And uh, yeah, that, that was nice. That was the best track uh, in England. For sure, but there was a lot of nice tracks, though. Mm -hmm. I remember, but I only been there one time, I think. But it, I was one meeting at Edinburgh. Oh yeah, and that was uh, that was nice. Yeah, yeah. and um, yeah, a lot of nice tracks. I mean, Oxford, Swindon, mm -hmm. Coventry. They're they're all got their uh, thing to them, and. Uh, and uh, when you don't like a track, I mean, normally it's because you struggle, right? Yeah. And once you find the solution to the problem, it, mm. all tracks are nice, really. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Be positive. Aren't you? If you're, yeah, if you're, if you're winning, mm. it's all good. Yeah. What was? You, what did you think of your time at uh, Lakeside? Because obviously you know you went there as well. And obviously well, that was a, that track. was a place where I did struggle. I didn't get going that year at all. Mm. And obviously it was the first year after uh, I broke my leg. Yeah. So you're and uh, no, that was the last thing I did in England, unfortunately. But 
Yeah, I struggle there, but obviously it's a good home truck. Home truck. So if you can weigh it up, I'm sure it can be very productive because I think there's a lot of riders that come to that place and think they're going to struggle, you know. Mm, mm, definitely, it's quite a trick. And that, that, that's sort of the same thing as we talked about before with Eastbourne. Uh, mm. You know, the riders that ride there might not be superstars in the world or whatever, but uh, at that track, it's yeah. not easy to face those riders, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, it was almost like they had sort of four or five number ones on their own track. Yeah. Uh, got John Farr here on YouTube. He's put, did Mikhail like the Wimbledon track? Did you ride the Wimbledon track? Uh, wasn't there a Grand Prix there? Uh, well, where that was, was there? No, that was Hackney. Hackney, that was Hackney. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, they... I've never ridden there as no. far as I know. No, it was a big stadium no. as well, I think, as well. Well, no, I... I'm not quite that old. <laughs> yeah, when he brought it up, I thought that was quite that was going back quite a bit. Mm. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Um, yeah, what was I going to say? I had. Uh, did you have any? Um, I know you guys obviously used to wear a lot of them. Did you have any sort of favourite Kevlar's leathers uh, that you used to ride with? Do you keep any of all that sort of stuff? Any stuff you've kept, or the race jackets, mm. anything like that? Uh, I might have a few suits left, yeah, but it's not many. Mm. Uh, most of the stuff that I've used, uh, there's a museum uh, close, quite close to Molilla. I know the Grand Prix riders and stuff, they usually go there just to get rid of a day or whatever. And that, he's, big, he's into motocross, that guy too. It's called MX World. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, he's uh, got a few of my bikes bikes there and a few suits oh, and stuff nice. so uh no uh, but i remember when i came to england mm. uh, uh, in telford i believe it was it was uh, a guy there who uh, gerald smitherman his name was he he used to uh, make the best suit in the world uh, made from leathers wow yeah and uh, yeah, so I, I remember when I, it was sort of a dream when, when we came over and we went there the first time and had the proper suit made yeah, in yeah. Telford. And it was so nice to, to use compared to what, what we used to wear coming from Sweden. I think so, I remember from Telford was the old, the old uh, I know they do ice hockey there, but I mean that they had the old um, ice speedway in Telford, didn't they? Did you ever do it? Yeah. Did you ever do an air? No, I never did that meeting, no. Mm. But I've been at the place because oh. I, I lived quite close to uh, to there Okay. Uh, at one time. So uh, I went there ice skating sometimes just mm. uh, for a bit of fun. I think in the last sort of few years, they had a, it was all revamped and they had a bit of a new rink. We'll done mm -hmm. that. Because um, Swindon uh, Ice Hockey have gone there a few times and I knew about it. Um, I just uh, what was the sort of uh, your favourite times in Sweden then in the in your own domestic league? Was that um, <clears throat> obviously you did a lot of riding there? Yeah, it was. Um, I remember that in the beginning when I started in '89, mm -hmm. uh, I remember it was. The way it worked for, I'm sure there's a lot of riders that can uh, feel the same thing, what I'm going to say now. But mm -hmm. once you have a elite league meeting, you know, on the Tuesday, mm -hmm. you, you knew where you were going to go and you prepared the, tra uh, the bike perfect and everything and you were, you were just super ready for the for the meeting and all the plan plans all the right gearings everything perfect mm -hmm. and then go to the meeting and then when i start to ride in england i sort of lost that and you got to give that away to 
to other people that prepare the bike and then you mm. just fly in you know mm. so i remember that year i well, when i started in england i used to uh, have a problem in sweden instead to to ride because I, I didn't feel i was ready mm-hmm. but it worked better in england because we used to do the the bikes in england ourselves you know in them days so you were more sort of mentally prepared correct for the mm-hmm. British league meetings Mm -hmm. and that's a big hurdle in the career to get over that sort of preparation and you become more and more professional and you just spend your time traveling and then get to the meeting and you've got to be able to just jump on the bike and make it work and trust other people that have made the correct job you know Mm. it's um the work that goes on before the meeting, the the preparations for the for the meeting itself is a big part of the success you're gonna have. Yeah. So uh, very very important, and I, I think that once you get professional, uh, like I'm talking about, it, it's a big hurdle to get over. Uh, that side of it and and then you gotta have a trust in all your mechanics and stuff like that but then eventually that starts to work too when you get closer and closer to the end goal did you have some close uh some good relationships with some mechanics that um obviously you got that trust with and yeah it's been a, a lot of uh, mechanics over the years and uh, and they all all been good and everyone has their strength you know uh so it's hard to mention any names but uh, the one i think that does stand out uh, that i still talk to Mm -hmm. uh quite a bit uh, is um, pete adams uh, son there chris adams I mean, I, I don't know who he's working for now, but he's worked for my brother and for me. And mm-hmm. I think he's done a bit for Torsell and oh, to- Jacobs, uh, sorry, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. he's uh, one of them guys that I can remember. And then mm-hmm. Graham Jones, I used to have him. He was very good. Uh, he's uh, more sort of the guy that knows how to wash the bike but also can get into the engine side as well so yeah, yeah. that can be handy sometimes for sure so i mean those kind of guys they uh, it's not easy to find that that mm-hmm. sort of people that know the sport in and out and mm-hmm. know the whole bike and the engine mm-hmm. so uh, obviously do you think that helps with the uh, former riders uh, being a mechanic? Because I know Paul Hurry did with PK as well, and you just mentioned. Yeah, I think things. so. That yeah. that that can work very good, but mm. uh, the problem is, uh, uh, I feel myself that I could never be a mechanic because I, I, I already washed too many bikes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I couldn't do it again, you know. Yeah. I, I, I would have to ride as well. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna wash it. You might as well ride. Yeah, 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 that's it. Because yeah. uh, obviously, during the mechanic thing, it must have got tenfold more when you were in the GPs as well. Uh, what were your sort of memories of all the GPs? Say again. When you were obviously uh, the mechanic side, it must have got even harder when you was in the GP as well. Yeah, so yeah. In the leagues, the GP is quite a lot. Yeah. Of that. Big set, yeah. that, isn't it, to organise? Yeah, well. yeah, that, but that was also another thing when I, because my world championship uh, started in the, in the, I won the under twenty one in ninety four, and then I got the wild card to the first Grand Prix, Grand Prix series, mm-hmm. and um, incredibly hard to to get get around that in those days. I think it's become a little bit easier maybe now, mm-hmm. but uh, in them days it it was it took up the whole weekend, mm. and you came to places that wasn't really like we were used to you know in the mm-hmm. we rode at maybe professional clubs in in britain and professional clubs in poland mm-hmm. and then you get somewhere in germany <laughs> and you 
don't feel the, the stadium maybe so well and you, mm. it's just offside a little bit to what you normally feel and then you got to spend time you know and just go and wait the whole day for the meeting and mm. those sort of things mm. to to get over that was uh, very hard for me i remember anyway and I've, mm. i'm sure there's a lot of riders that can feel the same way yeah, still yeah. I was just about to ask you about that as well. What were your sort of uh, memories? I know you won, didn't you win the Sweden under-21 championship? And then obviously you went on and won the uh, world under-21 as well. I think this is maybe it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> what were your memories of that? Uh, the memories is that uh, I, I, I think I struggled that year uh, in the leagues and stuff. I, Mm. struggle and struggle I did I did okay but I, I never felt on 100% top form during the year and I remember that on the qualification rounds to get into the to that meeting I, I sort of was on the edge to make it uh, but the year before mm -hmm. I, I was flying through the qualifications and I had a good meeting the year before as well and finish, uh, finished uh, second uh, but this year I, I did I didn't feel 100% but then I remember because uh, Sam used to uh, tune the engines or he had a guy there from Canada Carl Bloomfeld Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that helped Sam and, and he put together a team with six riders I believe it was me and my brother Craig Boyce Jan Stackman Ronnie Corey uh, and someone else uh, and uh, he put together an engine for this specific meeting and we got there and I did the practice, put it, put the engine in, did the practice, and I, straight away I felt that I'm, I'm on a special engine. Mm -hmm. So I, I was flying on the practice and I, I started straight away to build. I felt good. And then uh, come race day, made good starts. And, no problems. Rest was yeah, so that I remember that engine. It would be nice to know what was in there. Yeah, <laughs> a bit of a special <laughs> one. <laughs> to speak to Sam again. Yeah, a bit of tinkering and going on in there. I've <laughs> yeah. uh, got a Polish guys just come on. Um, Milos, I presume that's how you pronounce that. Milos, Milos. He's put, How are you, Mikhail? How's Speedway now in Sweden? Some new young talents on the way. Greetings from a Polish fan in Edinburgh. Uh, I remember when I was young and my father and my uncles watch it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, like we were saying before, it, mm. it does uh, struggle a little bit, but it's obviously not only due to the problems in the sport, it's uh, the pandemic as well as... Uh, doesn't make it any easier for sure and uh, but uh, yeah there's you know obviously there's a few up and coming interesting riders that come through and uh, I think especially on the ATCCs now you got some good riders in Eskilstun I think uh, Magnus set is from Sun I think he's riding okay and that could be interesting and mm -hmm. uh and a few others up there. And uh, so, who knows, you know, it, it's all in cycles, up and down. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Uh, just looking at a couple of bits. Uh, did you have any um, superstitions or anything when you raced, uh, Mikhail? Uh, not, that, not that much that I can remember anyway. Yeah, I, I remember who was it that had that. I think Andy Smith had he had loads of it. <laughs> yeah, he had that. He had that. So some some good. people got some weird ones. No. Yeah, no, I, I, I tried to stay them. away from that because, oh, yeah. I mean, once you get into it, I mean, Stressful, you've got, yeah, 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 it doesn't work. Yeah, it don't work for me anyway. No, 
wasting a lot of <laughs> energy on all that sort of stuff. Yeah. A lot of people get into it a bit too much. Um, if you were to say who were your biggest influences in your career were? Um, I'm not going to say my my family then and be boring, but uh, <laughs> uh, apart from that, I think because uh, at my Swedish club, they, they made a big signing. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe when was that maybe in 1990 or something like that Kelvin Tatum came okay, to yeah. us so we rode with him there mm-hmm. and uh, <clears throat> he had his bikes based uh, in the same village as, as me and my brother was mm-hmm. uh, so that was uh, good you know, because we could uh, spy a little bit on this, what he was doing and stuff. And I knew his mechanic, his Swedish mechanic as well. And he, later on, was was my mechanic in the Grand Prix. Okay. So that was uh, that was a big uh, thing. Yeah. And obviously, when we come to uh, England, it was the, with Sam, very naturally, mm. you know, uh, to be around him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Always open with with his stuff and uh, that was good, yeah. and um, a lot of knowledge mm, as well. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So those two, I think, yeah, when it comes to especially on the technical side, mm. uh, it was a big influence. Yeah, very in touch for with sure. Him. That uh, when I just had a quick chat with you the other day on uh, Snapchat, I think it was, and um, when I told you about that incident, unfortunately, at that motocross meeting. Um, Calvin was actually riding there as well. Oh, was he? Yeah, in the same race. Oh. Yeah, he's on a KX500, I think, sort of like an 80s bike. Right. Yeah, he, he was did he there. used to be a, Did he used to be motocross? Yeah, before he did speedway, I believe. He did schoolboy motocross over here, and he was very good at that as well, apparently. I've been told. Oh, so. right, right, right. Yeah. And then obviously yeah, on my, I'm, I'm actually doing a little bit more in in that sport now because my uh, my uh, bigger uh, son mm-hmm. of the two, yep. he's uh, he's into motocross, and uh, so uh, this week we we had practice, or last week we had practice uh, Wednesday and uh, and uh, Saturday mm-hmm. at the track in Molilla. It's a sand track there, so it's yeah. a bit heavy. But how old is he then? Is he sort of uh, racing in school, schoolboy youth? Is it or yeah, thirteen? Yeah. But okay. at the moment, uh, there's not many meetings on, or uh, so um, it's yeah. it's more practice at the moment. Uh, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, I think it's it's a good sport because you get a lot of time on the bike, and obviously mm-hmm. that's what the kids love. And that, that I think is the downside, perhaps, with speedway because yeah. you never get enough riding. You know, it's only five minutes per mm-hmm. per meeting, and even if you go there and practice, you can't be on the bike for hours on end. No. You know, and uh, that is uh, something that needs to be addressed. I think in some way to make it a little bit easier to mm. to actually be on the bike instead of being the workshop. Mm. I think I think it's obviously probably a lot better in well we know it's a lot better in Poland, but here in the UK most of the speedway teams don't own their stadiums or they've got greyhounds or yeah they haven't, really, they haven't really just got the open time have they to just be able to do that. Like you said, motocross you can just go out and practice for the day at a certain track or yeah, that's that's another thing that that must be very hard in because I remember that when I rode in Volvrante, we could never practice. Mm. We had one practice, and that was the present practice, and then that that was it, straight into the meeting, and you could never make a test at that track. I remember that. So we, it was only only meetings. That's mm. it. Mm. Yeah, but then you had some tracks, I think, that you could practice on. Isn't that right? Like Peterborough. How, how was Swindon? Could you ride at Swindon? Not really. They had that small track made in the middle, um, but that's sort of been a bit hit and miss over the years. But um, is that to do? Is that to do with the sound or or what is, is it? What? 
is it to do with the sound to well the now noise? now Mikhail, the since you since you've been to swindon the sort of the, the housing is literally there's a sort of side of a house is almost touching the pits oh really so, yeah it's got that that much so we're still fingers crossed on this whole new stadium is going to sort of be built where the new where the old one is now but with the housing so close and that obviously there's a lot of worry about that side of things oh yeah um, yeah so we're, we're fingers crossed and that was another reason why swindon didn't run this year uh even after the year out that everyone had um they were obviously sort of saying that they're getting the stadium re revamped and renewed and everything but um we don't really know what's happening at the moment so it's just a bit of a fingers crossed and hopefully we don't lose it oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's uh classic places for sure mm -hmm. uh, those old places it's mm -hmm. uh a lot of uh, good speedway around those tracks, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the track's been changed at Swindon as well. I don't know if you knew that. No, um, I didn't. Yeah, the first corner they brought it quite a, quite a bit in. Mm -hmm. So it's not as, quite as big, but it sort of did make a few more lines, and there was some good passing and everything over the last couple of years. And obviously, we won the league, um, the last one that England done before this one. Obviously, had the year out that everybody had out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a shame not to run this year sort of technically being the reigning champions and all that as well. So not good. Who's the team manager down there now? Roscoe still. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah still Roscoe. Roscoe. Yeah. Yeah, even he's having a little ride uh, in my... I'm having a sort of a motocross reunion meeting because I used to race uh, motocross in the 90s and schoolboy in the British schoolboy and that. And uh, he's having a ride at my meeting. I'm having a reunion in September. Mm hmm and a few of the old Speedway guys are riding. Chris Louie is having a ride. Um, a few guys, Ollie Allen, that's the joint GB oh, manager. Yeah. Quite a few yeah. are having a go. Andy Graham, you probably remember Andy Graham. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. in the 60s, 60s now. He's having a go as well. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, him and Alan Graham even rode sidecars together after Speedway. Yeah. Uh, I, don't I have to say hello to Roscoe. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. I remember I had one time a, a, a particular year uh, where I had a mobile phone that used to ring Roscoe the whole time, pocket ringing him, you know, yeah. in the middle of the night. Yeah. Maybe 10 times in one year. I woke him up in the middle of the night. I've been out traveling, coming back. And the bloody, and I stood there in the middle of the night just getting ready to go in and crash in the bed yeah. and I heard someone Michael Michael and he was picked it up I found Roscoe again sorry Roscoe down <laughs> that was the yeah. one was it you just kept leaning on that one <laughs> yeah so it was it must have been that it was uh, in the top of the list there or something you know? yeah 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 probably Alan or something alphabetical mm. or something like that was it what um mm. I was going to obviously ask you, as a Swindon fan, obviously uh, my dad and my uncle rode for Swindon Robins in the 60s and 70s as well. That was my connection to Speedway. Um, yeah. Did you ever get to, did you ever nearly sign for anyone else in the British League? Obviously, I was going to ask Swindon, but anywhere at all, other than I know you were at Wolves and did the Lakeside thing, but was there any others you got close to signing for in the UK? Or Yeah, but well, there was, like I said before, in the beginning, mm. uh, I did have a lot of uh, uh, offerings sent over. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, Peterborough, uh, Oxford. Mm -hmm. Could in, even have been, uh, I'm sure, uh, yeah, could it was other clubs too, I remember. But obviously it's a long time ago now. But then you saw a signed. And I felt ha happy there, you know. Yeah. Felt happy with the management and everything, and yeah. and uh, it was just keep going, uh, basically. And then uh, uh, at the end there, it was I was on loan to uh, to Arena Essex the, the last year, uh, but uh, that was his. For me, I, I I really struggled in England with the with the injury I sustained, and mm. never felt strong in my left leg mm. after that, and uh, it sort of hurt me. I needed uh, bigger and easier tracks. 
Mm. Right, good. Yeah, yeah, get it. What's uh, your obviously memories? I, I believe you won the World Cup four times with Sweden. That must have been a big thing for you, very proud thing to do. Yeah. Uh, what I can remember from those meetings was uh, that it was always uh, very hard meetings, those mm. uh, league meetings, because you didn't want to let the, the, the boys down, you know. So it was a lot of pressure, and it being fourteen tournament as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, even if you rolled brilliant, mm. you never could get away. There were always someone chasing close behind. <laughs> and if you had an engine failure or something like that, you could ruin the whole thing for the whole team. Yeah. Uh, and even if you did lose one race, so I, from what I can remember, it was the most stressful meetings that I used to be in, you know. Yeah, yeah, you felt like the pressure of it all, yeah. Yeah, because you didn't want to lose, and it being the 14 tournament that made it special, and it, I remember it used to be long meetings too from what i can remember yeah never-ending story it seemed yeah and you wanted mm. to get to the end of it you know and finish it but uh, <laughs> yeah it was a long long struggle all the time and, uh, yeah sorry go on. yeah at one time they or maybe i still they used to have the joker, you know, throwing the joker. And I see, yeah. we used to be in the lead most yeah. of the time, and we could never use that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's quite mm. annoying, actually, isn't it? <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think we did uh, use it uh, successfully at some some meeting. Mm. Yeah, it can work and for and against. <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, definitely. So that, that was, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was, uh, but it, at the end, when it worked out, obviously it makes it even more fantastic. Yeah. You know, so you got to fight hard and you got to feel bad. And then once you win, it's even more fantastic. Yeah, very good. Was it very competitive between a lot of you uh, Swedish guys? Because you, at that, all those sort of errors that you rode through that was always stacked with loads of Swedish uh, riders are also good. Obviously, personally, I loved uh, Jimmy Nilsson's and all that, that uh, rode at Swindon. And like you said, there was you, there was all these guys, Tony Olsen's, Perry Onsen's, Jan Andersen's. It seems sort of uh, just continuous that you had. Yeah. A, bit like, a bit like Denmark, you had a sort of a hell of a lot of uh, riders. Yeah, it was there. I, I don't, I can't really explain that, but it, it uh, throughout my career, I I've seen the sport uh, go. Obviously, from quite low to incredibly popular. But I think, on the other hand, when I say that, when I mean when I just said popular, I mean with the crowds and everything. When Tony started to win the world championship, and it was a lot big, a lot big crowds at mm. Speedway. Mm. But during the whole 30 odd years that I rode, it always seemed to be less and less riders the whole time, mm. all the way through. So I, I guess uh, that is the big uh, struggle. And I think in, in the early days there, when you mentioned like Per and when we used to have uh, championship rounds or what I called it for the uh, what was that for for the they used to ride three days in a row right yeah. to get to the qualification for the world final oh, right. okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but this is uh, now I'm talking maybe uh, more my brother's uh, mm. sort of agent, Jimmy and, and those guys. Yeah. Uh, sort of a Nordic, it? Nordic those meetings, you know, they, they, they were filled with, I mean, Per Johnson and Jimmy Nils, that was mm. really top, yeah. top 
people in, in Speedway yeah. and in the world. Mm. But it was very hard competition in, in those. Once you got the be best 16 riders together in Sweden, mm. it was uh, very competitive. Yeah. And I think that's, that part of it has changed. Mm. And now you have only a few guys that are exceptionally good but sort of the uh, there's nothing under really, you know. Mm. So that's mm. something. Yeah. That's like changed, that's... and I think you can see the same thing in England, uh, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was uh, when I first came over, and even even before then, of course, it it was very competitive teams. Yeah. And uh, a lot of good riders in the teams, mm, world class riders all the way through. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, For quite a long time, I would say like England was sort of a uh, sort of the number one nation with a team riding for a, for a while through that period, through certain periods. Yeah, um, but now it's obviously most of it sort of mainly probably out. It's just Poland now, really, and then uh, everyone's trying to just fit in around that. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mm. yeah it's uh, but a fair play to them. I mean, they yeah, keep absolutely. it up, and it's always been a big sport down there. But they mm. made it more professional, mm -hmm. and they are the ones now that drive the sport forward. And we'll we'll see what it comes down to. But mm. uh, you Got know, the fans as well, don't they, Mikael, as well. So oh yeah, a lot amazing. of fans, too. passionate yeah. fans. Mm. <laughs> so I don't know if you see. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen in the COVID thing that they were uh, running meetings, uh, obviously behind closed doors, and they had them uh, sort of genie boom sort of machines outside, and you know where they could like <laughs> lift themselves up in that. Uh, oh, really? Thing. Yeah, I was watching it outside the stadium like that. You'd have like twenty-five of these like machines with the old arms right up in the air, so they could sort of stand in them and watch over the stadium. It's crazy, incredible. But it just incredible. shows their passion, doesn't it? Shows their passion. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, it it is a big sport down there, and uh, yeah, it's it's very nice and what they've done mm. to everything. I mean, in the beginning when we used to go down, it, it wasn't so nice. Uh, you know, always uh, obviously the history that they've had uh, from coming from communist into, I mean, it's not so long ago, you know, mm. and uh, they sort of got into the European Union and everything and mm. things start to open up and, and uh, the whole country really has changed. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. I gotta say, it's, uh, mm. it's like all the rest of us now. Mm. So that's nice. Yeah, nice. I've got uh, Simon Howes here. He's a motocross rider in the UK. I've uh, seen him at the weekend. He's put, uh, I've never been into Speedway or even watched it, but uh, I've seen a few of these interviews. Uh, not only are they mad, uh, but they're also good down-to-earth guys too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. They think you're, they yeah. Think you're mad because you're riding with no brakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. No, you don't get far if you're mad, I think. No, <laughs> it's, gotta be, um, it's gotta be done with calculation and mm. a bit of feel to it too. Otherwise, you won't be in it for long, I suppose. No, and I there's think a lot of tough guys, competitive mm. guys. So, mm. I think a lot of the speedway uh, guys used to think the uh, motocross guys were mad as well with the whole jumps and uh, racing for thirty minutes and whatever. Oh yeah, very yeah. hard work, very hard work. Incredible. Yeah, very cool. That's the thing. Everything is uh, going forward all the time. It's yeah. uh, some of the sports is just amazing to see the achievements that they pull off. Yeah, all the stuff they're doing now, like triple flip, triple uh, flips, well, and back flips, and all that on the box. Yeah, it's unreal. Oh, unreal. It's crazy, it? crazy. And the trial boys is uh, fascinating. Yeah, the way they go up these steep faces and keep control, keep yeah. Feet pretty cool yeah. it's it pretty cool do you like uh watching other motorsports as well Mikhail? do you watch any other motorcycle sports at all yeah I, I watch whatever i can get into really but mm. i don't follow anything that hard 
like no. we spoke to before. So I'm not, yeah. I haven't managed to find something that I become a big fan in. Fan of, yeah. Well, maybe I'm I'm just burned out. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, burned out of my cycle. What about any other sports? Do you like any other sports? Yeah, I love a lot of sports. I mean, yeah. uh, I can appreciate most stuff. Yeah, really like football, ice hockey, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I'm a little bit more bigger fan of ice hockey than yeah. uh, football. I think. Yeah. 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 And then obviously. It is motocross, but uh, it ain't very big as a spectator sport here in Sweden. Mm. So I mean, it's more, it's more the love of riding mm. a bike that that comes down to, and that's that's nice, mm. Mm. you know. So uh, obviously, you must have a lot of fond memories of uh, you had a you were a major legend and still are still are at the Wolverhampton Speedway. Some great memories over the years. Um, you must have really enjoyed your time there. Yeah, it's a fantastic uh, yeah. part of the life, and uh, and I always felt uh, felt good in England too. It's uh, fantastic people, mm -hmm. very uh, open, and uh, you know a nice lifestyle with the pub life and. A lot of restaurants and stuff like that and yeah it's plenty to do nice country good people good racing yeah fantastic who were your sort of uh, closest uh, friends during your speedway career then who are the guys that were sort of quite close to you that you spent quite a bit of time with or well uh, the um, the problem is you don't really have time to to bind them in it's the people that you, you sort of work with them as well, mm. and uh, but they've become friends mm. as well. But uh, I was close to uh, Pete Adams. Uh, mm. I used to stay a lot with him, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously his family mm -hmm. around him. So, uh, yeah, that's probably it. I mean, it's just no time you know to do anything else really yeah, was you, you spend time with the team mm. teammates obviously mm. but then come the meetings over it's just go home fly time. out the next yeah. day and next meeting and another group of friends you know so uh, was peter adams uh, an influence on you i've heard that obviously uh, before his Wolves days, he was uh, well known for his uh, managing at uh, Cradley Heath and their successful errors with the uh, Eric Gundersons and Bruce Pennells and all that sort of error. And then obviously into Wolves and all his. Uh, was he good? Did you like uh, riding under his management? Yeah, very much. Mm. I like uh, I like his style. You know, mm. it's uh, it's not uh, many that that use that. Uh, type of but that always worked the best for me is kind of always level headed you know it doesn't matter if we make a fantastic meeting mm -hmm. or if we have a bad meeting mm -hmm. his face is always the same <laughs> so that that uh, yeah that works good for me I don't want any hysteric guys you know because the mm. pressure is on anyway and we just mm. need to to focus on the but i mean it's also saying that though it's different you know some some guys they need someone to shout in their ear before the before they go out but i was never like that no. i i like it to be uh, quiet and calm and i can focus on my thing and mm. try and do my thing yeah they yeah, work good Work good for me and obviously very good with the tactics and all of that. Mm. Amazing he's still doing it as well. He's doing it tonight, I believe. Uh, I think, oh, is he? I think Wolves are away to Peterborough on the Eurosport. I think they are. Oh, I'll, really? catch, I'll catch it later on in the recording. But, uh, yeah, he's still still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. He's probably chasing Great. off for some uh, league title or something. Just to, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, he loves it. Yeah, unbelievable. 
<laughs> he's funny um you've won obviously a lot as a team rider and then as an individual as well do you did you prefer to be part of a team or did you like the individual racing or did you like both the same or what was your view on that um yeah it's a hard question uh, yeah it it can be special to be in the team uh, yeah because it's it's the joy of the other guys too. I mean, yeah, it's it's a special feel. I'm I'm gonna have to go with the with the team there, I think, because mm -hmm. it's so nice to to have the feeling that you've you've done it together, mm -hmm. um, sort of thing. And uh, yeah, team spirit. And I remember also that it's a little bit of a extra special feeling as well. But once it's up to you, I remember one league title down in Eastbourne. It came down to the last race. Yeah, and it was me and my brother yeah. and it, Mark Lorem. I'm sure he was in there. And it could have been Screeny or uh, Norris. I'm not 100% sure. But it came down to this race anyway. And we needed to win by... 4-2 or something like that or 3 or all that. I'm not sure but I, I won the race I made the start I won the race and that that feels good you know when you come back to the pits and everyone's mm -hmm. so happy about it you know, it's yeah. like gives an extra feeling because of that otherwise it just a, would have been me I would have been happy for myself yeah. but now I see there's six other guys you know that are over the moon as well and you yeah. yeah so it's it's special for sure i'm sure i'm sure that was on tv uh maybe sky sports yeah it was on sky i remember watching that yeah i definitely seen that yeah, mm. it, was pretty, it was a those meetings are special that come down to the last race and had a good atmosphere and all that especially yeah when when, it, when you think about it i mean mm. all the points throughout the whole whole year and it comes down to the last race. It's <laughs> uh, it's pretty special, but it's yeah. it's hard, you know, as well. I mean, if you lose that race, it don't feel so good. But no. uh, someone's gotta gotta do it. Yeah, fair play. Uh, it must uh, some nerves must be going around, flying around a little bit when you go out to do that. Uh, knowing that, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, I don't know how I couldn't do it now. I know that. Yeah. I've <laughs> uh, got a nice picture here as well. I think this was at uh, that was at PK's uh, testimony. I think wasn't it as mm. you. Oh yeah, a few Wolves legends there. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, very nice. I can't remember. Did you have? Did you have a? Did you have a testimonial as well? I can't remember. Yeah, I did do. Yeah, I did do in uh, in Wolverhampton. Yep. I had one. Did you have a lot of guys uh, to that meeting? Yeah, it was. Uh, I can't really remember the the crowd. I think wasn't super good, but uh, I had a good uh, lineup mm -hmm. for sure. And uh, yeah. yeah, it was good, good, good day there and a good race and everything. So yeah, nice. Well, oh, here he is, like Laura. Yeah, there's Lauren there, isn't it? Mm. Doing his usual, trying to go around the boards. That's it. <laughs> you knew where he's going to be coming from. <laughs> he's going to put back the leg there now and put yeah, the knee in the ground. That's it, and then try and cut back. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, he loved it. I was just going to look at one of these pictures. Was this uh, was that in America, that one? I think Yeah. played over in America, didn't you? Yeah, yeah that's uh, in Auburn. Oh, yeah. Was that good experience over there? Very nice experience. Mm. Yeah, I actually did um, my last meeting was in Auburn. Mm. That's the last time I was on a speedway bike, and I haven't wow, touched the motorbike after that. So you don't ride at all now? Then you've not had a few spins or no, nothing, nothing. Wow. Do you miss uh, it now? Not really. No. It's. Uh, uh, People, 
obviously when I'm at the, at the track in Molilla, a lot of people ask me, don't you want to ride again? <laughs> yeah. And I say, yeah, no, I don't. No. I don't feel like it. No, and it and uh, so everyone's shocked, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a bit strange, but I, you know, it's everything has its time, and uh, you know, to to get on again. I mean, no, I, I'd rather stay away. It's quite the problem is, I think, with the head, right? Mm. That you just still can imagine that you can do it so <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. probably better for me yeah, yeah. you know stand on the side because i think i'll be disappointed <laughs> myself <laughs> <laughs> was there was there any riders that uh, you didn't really enjoy racing against over the years was there some guys that were a little bit sketchy that didn't particularly write racing with I remember one guy, uh, there was a, a few hard riders that I remember. There was one at Ipswich, I remember. Ipswich. What was his name? Mm. Ben something. Is it Ben? Ben Barker? No. no. Oh, Ben. Hang on a minute. Ben. 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 No, it was a Ben Howe. Ben Howe. Uh, I can't remember. He used to be a hard to be up against i remember and then there was another one at uh Cradley, who was a wild kid mm -hmm. uh was it scott smith oh yeah yeah i remember him. they used to call him this the scud missile yeah, yes sir. yeah i think he didn't have ginger hair maybe i'm not sure yeah i remember when um uh, Scott Nichols mm. came came up because he, mm. he was fantastic straight away, mm. and he was very hard to be up against. Mm. A lot of elbows there, I remember. Yeah, Quite yeah. aggressive. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, very aggressive and, yeah. and hard to be up against. Really hard uh, rider, and uh, mm. and always always wouldn't leave leave you alone. You know, <laughs> like an easy race, always chasing you. And the same with Lorem, I suppose. That was never yeah. easy. Mm. But, yeah, it was a lot of tough competition. A lot mm. of tough competition. Definitely. For sure. Yeah. You know. But th those they were always chasing some mm. of the English lad. Mm. To a degree that the same with uh, yeah, the there, there's always been hard English riders. They always cried hard from behind all the time, you know, mm. always kept coming, sort of, yeah. screeny, Lorem. Yeah. Uh, Bomber is the same. Yeah, he's he's no player, yeah. Constantly. A bit of... Just keep coming. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Always made bad starts. <clears throat> mm. um, if I had to push you on it, who would you say were the three best riders that you've ever raced against in your career? Quite a difficult one, I know. Uh, yeah, well, the obviously you're gonna know the first one, I think. Who, who are you gonna think? <laughs> Another Swede, so, totally. yep. yeah, yeah, mm. uh, and then after that, it gets a little bit harder, but it was mm. very hard to rise against uh, Hans Nielsen. Mm. Very hard. Exact, yeah. Always made the start and the race was over, finished. <laughs> yeah. Eric, I didn't I didn't uh, come up against him a lot because mm. he 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 crashed uh, yeah, yeah. quite yeah. early. Do you yeah, remember what year that was? Eighty nine, I think. So yeah. eighty nine. So that was the year I started up. Yeah. Maybe only raced him one time yeah. in Sweden. Mm. Or something like that. Mm. One once or twice in Sweden. So, mm. uh, well, uh, who can I say after? Um, if Jason, Jason, like I said before, Jason mm. and Ryan Sullivan, I remember was hard to be up against. So. I, mm. 
and Lee Adams. Yeah, you mentioned them. So it's, it's plenty of them. Too so many. <laughs> but, but okay, I have to pick three, so I'll say Jason. Okay. Yeah, fair That's enough. the third. Um, <clears throat> if you had to give any uh, advice to any young youngsters out there that are uh, potentially going to see the video, they see all you guys that we all idolised over the years, what would you say to a young young rider that was thinking about being a pro speedway rider? What sort of advice would you uh, personally give them from your experiences? Um, I think the, the best advice, I think, is that uh, take your time and, uh, and don't give up too easy, mm. you know? You've got to give it uh, a long time because it's a lot to learn. Mm. For sure and the learning curve is steep probably one of the biggest problems that uh, speedway have i think is that you you know you almost need to have some sort of uh, story that a lot of riders have the, the one i just told with, with my father mm. used to ride because mm -hmm. speedway is uh, special like that i mean you can't go to a shop mm. if we compare it to motocross because it's your expertise <laughs> but you can go to the shop yes. and buy a bike mm. and it works perfect mm -hmm. right and you can just play around on that for a long time yeah. and it keeps working just wash it and mm. clean the air filter mm. lube it a little bit change the oil that's it speedway it's like Ikea, right? You go to the store, you get a box. Yeah. But Ikea, that at least give you a, a instructions. These people, <laughs> like you have to put it together yourself. Mm. I mean, it's, a, it's very hard like that. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That is, uh, yeah, so you got to learn the, the technical side of things, yeah. and then you got to learn how to ride too. Yeah. So it makes it twice as hard, I guess. Yeah, because it seems like the guys are always sort of um, <clears throat> chasing the settings, aren't they, all the time, just chasing settings, trying to make very fine details. But I gather it must get to the point sometimes I've heard them sort of talking in interviews and things like that where they almost must have to go back to some sort of back to not, back to a, sta a start-off setting because you must sort of lose yourself on what you're changing and what's working. Yeah, yeah, mm. for sure. You can mm. get in deep ruts in hundred mm. percent. It's mm. easy to. So sometimes it's just better to to leave it alone, you know, and, yeah. and just find the answers in yourself as a rider. Yeah, because yeah. the the one thing is that I mean it's it's another thing once you get to the level of the say the Grand Prix, you're in the World Champion, obviously the bike needs to be 100% mm. all the time. But for the league meetings, I think that uh, it's more to do, especially in England. And that's one thing that I've always liked with uh, riding in England, that mm. it, it you can throw millions at a bike, mm. but if you can't ride, you aren't getting nowhere. You got to be a good rider yeah. to to be able to master England, I think. And that yeah. that is probably the most beautiful thing about the sporting in, in England, yeah. because I think in Sweden, but especially in Poland, yeah. it's a lot more with the bike. You know, it's got to be super fast, yeah. and it's big, wide, easy. Yeah. To ride tracks and everyone's fast. <laughs> and uh, another thing that, that is uh, has come in over the maybe the last twenty years is the you can't weigh nothing even. You know, you gotta weigh fifty kilos yeah. to be good. And that's yeah. <laughs> that's another downside. When you, sort of, when you see the sizes of your smiles lick. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like a bag of sugar on the bike. <laughs> How is that with the motocross? How important is the weight? Yeah, I suppose 
like you said, I've I went and watched some uh, youth stuff lately, and then you see these sort of 15, 16 year old kids on the say the one two fives, two strokes, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously they tune the bikes to the gunnels, and they've got special fuel and everything's you know special pipe, special this, special that, and they don't weigh nothing either. Obviously, they're going to get off the gate quicker and be faster than a guy that weighs you know two or three times as much. Yeah. So, yeah. It so it's the same way. Apart, yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in the world championship in motocross, you need to be, can you say uh, kilos or how, how heavy can you be and still be competitive? Yeah, I would say, uh, I would say it's harder for the taller guys as well. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. It's definitely harder for the taller guys as well, I would say. Um, but watching that, looking at the world championship, most of the guys that have won the world championships, not really big guys to be fair they're all no. the same sort of size um very obviously slim fit <clears throat> oh, yeah. the same sort of weight and stuff like that but yeah you don't really see uh it's a bit different than back in the day maybe the 80s and 90s it probably wasn't as much of a thing where it wasn't as professional in that type of thing but now everything's in that special special diets uh mental training all sorts of everything's oh, coming yeah. isn't it it's like a same in speedway yeah Mm. Yeah, it's the same so yeah, it's uh i can feel a bit i don't like it all the time when it is mm. like that i would like yeah. to see the best rider mm. right should exactly. win the race and uh, it shouldn't be too much about the equipment and uh yeah but it's hard, on the other hand, to do anything about that. I mean, it's mm. got to be sort of a free market and whatever. It can't be too many rules either. But mm. uh, I think in the past, I think Speedway has been successful because of the regulations and stuff. Mm. I mean, once you look at it in a historical sense, mm. I think it has looked the same for a long time mm. for an untrained eye you know it the sport mm. is still the same mm. it's quick enough but at least it's not too much electronics and things like that yeah, in and it's not so much high tech in speed and i think that's uh maybe the strong side but i think that they for sure uh, the people that are in charge need to think about a way to be able to buy a bike mm. uh, and make it easier to start riding, you know, mm. and uh, try and get away, go to a shop. If, if you imagine it like motocross, right? Yeah. You go to the shop and just buy a bike and you know nothing, but you know the bike is good. Yeah, That would be a good feeling in Speedway to be able to do that. Big, big thing, like you said as well, about the practice where you could go and buy a motocross bike tomorrow and then you could go and practice in the week or at the weekend now in the UK, yeah. for instance. Yeah. Like you said, Speedway, you, you'd be a struggle to get anywhere to have a go on a bike. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, That's probably the... And that, I think, it's only it's only in Poland that they got an answer for that at the moment, mm. I think. So, the, because they have maybe more money and I know some places the club owns bikes and stuff and the young riders can just be there mm. during the week and just have practice almost every night I mm. think you know yeah. and that obviously gives results yeah. you gotta be practicing yeah. if you don't do that you ain't getting nowhere it's interesting what you said about all the new mod cons and stuff as well because I don't really like the way them say the motocross has gone now from when I finished sort of uh, late 90s, 2000. Then it went obviously to the four strokes, which wasn't too much of a problem. But like now they, where I used to be a good starter on say reactions with 40 mm. on the line, I could on a 125 two stroke could be sort of pretty much first all the time. But now they do like, um, they've got like launch controls on the bike. They've got, uh, you put the front suspension down, it stays low. So you don't, so it doesn't wheelie off the gate. Mm. They start on metal grids now. Um, mm. it's like so it's getting like a little bit weird almost like f1 you know yeah, launch, yeah. launch control and all this and it's like taking the art out of the you know the starting skill yeah 
and stuff like yeah. that. I'm not too keen on all that side of. No, no, I think it can get yeah. out of hand. But I, I gotta say that uh, in Speedway, mm. at least over my period in there, that tried to slow it down a little bit like that, mm. and it, it's been successful, I think, you know. Mm. Mm. But there need to address certain other things like we're just talking about for mm. sure they need to make it easier yeah and, uh, big thing isn't it mm. yeah i think, I think that maybe some of those grand prix boys you know uh, maybe they can help there i don't know help the young riders to you know i don't know sell bikes or do whatever mm. sell a janovsky bike or sell a Wolfenden bike, you know, because they do that, like you said, as you know, in motocross, they do the say, for instance, uh, the top American guy as well, he's obviously German, but you've got like a Ken Roxon edition Honda, mm -hmm. or yeah, or stroke. like they imagine you did that, like I said, that would be a good idea with Speedway, yeah, and then they can they could you know put it together, the, the mechanics that could put every team that could build 10 bikes, maybe. Mm. Just sell mm, very good to, idea. to people that want to buy it. I'm sure that that could maybe help out instead of, like I said, buy everything in a box. I mean, mm. it's just next to impossible to find someone that can mm. deal with that, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a big thing, it is a big thing, like you said, for sure. Um, mm. I'll just ask you a couple more before we go. I appreciate your time. Um, what, uh, did you see the new rule about the? In Poland, obviously, uh, the guys that ride in Poland, they're only allowed to ride in one of the lead. Did you see that for this year? Yeah, I've heard about it, yeah. Mm. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's... Uh, I'm not surprised. I think it's been... Um, it's been like that before, I think. I, I can somehow remember it from i remember in the beginning it was a big struggle about dice you know when we rode in england yeah and sweden tried to keep their tuesday tuesday yeah and then all the british tracks that i had they could ride any day mm, right so oh, yeah Just lost you there, Mikhail. Hopefully he's going to come back on. Just frozen up there, Mikhail a second. I was just looking at what you guys said there. Hopefully he's going to come back on. Um, not sure what happened there. Let's try and get him back on there. He's gone there, look. Too sure. Let's do there a minute. Let's take him off there a minute. Hopefully, I'll come back on in a second. Yeah, some very uh, interesting insight from there from me, Kel. Like even saying about there about um, <clears throat> where you can go buy a motocross bike tomorrow. You can get the you know replicas of the famous riders. Your Ken Roxon replica Honda. Your Carioli replica Red Bull KTM, <clears throat> and all these sorts of things like. Like I said, go into a shop. You can't just go and buy a speedway bike like that. Be a, could be an interesting idea. I don't know if uh, Mikhail's going to be able to come on there. Uh, just going to message him. <laughs> See if he's coming on for a second. We'll get the uh, Wi-Fi jokes going. <laughs> Maybe someone's cut the meter on the Wi-Fi, on the internet. <laughs> Hot enough for you all out there? I'm not going to set out for this heat me. I've just about uh, sort of got rid of my uh, tan line there. Ah, there I, I think I've got him again now. Yo. Ah, oh, sorry ah, about that. That's all right. The connection a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, yeah so I can remember. Mm that they've been uh, sort of struggling the different countries with the uh, yeah. diets and stuff. And I feel 
that now when Poland has got the upper hand now, I think it's yeah. you know the it might even end up that some of the riders are only going to ride there. Mm. I yeah, think it's, 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 it's sad, but it's you know I don't know. Mm. Can we call it natural move anyhow? You know, mm. I, I know we don't like it, but no, it's the most professional you know. one, and mm. they've got the fans and the and the back in and the sponsors, I guess, and got some great stadiums, aren't they? And mm. <clears throat> very professional. And... Yeah, so that they don't want I guess what they're thinking maybe is they don't want people to get injured, maybe, or yeah, exactly, yeah. elsewhere or mm. I think it's gonna go that way, unfortunately. I think, is, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Some someone just asked an interesting question before we go. We got. A, uh, do you have any regrets from your career? Uh, I actually do a little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was uh, when I um, I had a really good year in Sweden and Poland, mm-hmm. uh, all five. Mm-hmm. It was, mm-hmm. uh, but then I I crashed quite heavy in Sweden and I broke my leg uh, and uh, I broke my arm and then uh, I was going that good and I wanted to ride and I felt confident and everything and I you know I had some pressure from the clubs to come back soon and all that stuff and. Mm-hmm. But I said from the beginning that I need the the rod out of my leg and everything before I go on the bike again. And then I went for the the, the accident happened in July, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I went through the year and the winter and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I had a bit of rehab, but I didn't have my normal exercise that I always had. You know, a, a bit of motocrossing and running and all that you know i was i wasn't ready for the season Mm -hmm. and i went to the operating table i think it was in april Mm. uh 06 took the rod out and then straight in the van down to poland and jumped on the bike confident as hell Mm. you know and i'm just easy i can do it and I, I start to lose immediately, and I, and I did not even understand why myself. Mm. But from there, it started to snowball from there, and I just, everything was lost. I just totally lost myself mm. with that. Lost the confidence and lost mm. everything else. Um, and that was it for a limit. And I never got back to any serious standard. After mm. what happened, you know, mm. Big thing so that, that was uh, something that I realize now mm. that I easily could have given it years. I couldn't have given it mm. the whole season in all six. I could have mm. just practiced and done my own thing. Mm. But you just get into what mm. people are saying so much and mm. but i easily could have taken one or two seasons even mm. and still got back to where i was you know yeah, was, yeah. but i thought i remember that i thought if i don't do this now the door's gonna be shut mm. but it's never shut mm. it's only shut if you're bad mm. right yeah well, that was the, the big mistake. Yeah. yeah, I regret that. I should have uh, just made come sure back strong instead. Yeah, so he was properly ready. Mm. Mm. Did it? Did it? Did it? Um, do you think it sort of made the, a lot of the riders think as well that they could continue their careers on when sort of people were looking at your Greg Hancock's going into his later forties, still he was winning like GPs and stuff like that. I think it did it make everyone think that they could ride on longer possibly um i think that's quite rare that people mm. are are riding for a, a very long time mm. uh, because you gotta 
you know, it it does get harder mm. with age, and you know, it especially gets harder with the success, I think, mm. because eventually you're going to start to lose, mm. you know. And uh, to keep going then, it's not so easy, mm. you know, and, and ev- the expectations you have on yourself and everyone else's expectations as well. Mm. It's never going to go away, you know. They're always going to mm. look at you as as you were when you were at your best, and mm. and that's one of the big mm. to get over. Yeah. So I suppose Greg went on quite a bit. I suppose hand, hands went on quite a bit. Um, I suppose PK. Yeah. I'm just trying to think how old PK was when he finished. He was. Uh, yeah, how old was he? He must have been. Oh, is he? What? Uh, uh, how old was Greg when he finished? Oh, he's got to be like 48, 49. Yeah. yeah. PK was in that sort of year yeah. as well. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Really. Amazing, really. Amazing. What so, was the year? What, what year? How old are you when you finished? You said it's five years ago. Yeah, yeah so, so I was a, bit, a little bit younger, for, call it 42. Sort yeah, of. yeah. But still quite, quite, what you said, going into your 40s. Uh, it's a long career. Mm, it's a very long career. Sure. So when people say, but I mean, don't but I, I, did feel that, I did feel that, you know, it was, you, you for me, it, I always had the sense of, uh, after that injury, I was never satisfied with myself. Mm-hmm. I could never be satisfied. There, there was no satisfaction for me in it because I always felt that, ah, even if I had a good meeting, because eventually you go down that much that people are going to go, ah, today he's had a good meeting, right? And he scored eight points. Yeah. But to me it was... Yeah, it was a rider, yeah. You know, because you're always thinking about how it should be. Yeah. You'll, you'll, think, you're, so, still think, you're still thinking in the same way of 10 points plus. <clears throat> yeah. Double figures all the time in that mentality of... Yeah. Mm. So I think that's the that's the thing. Uh, mm. So it, it, it might be, I mean, you've spoken to them, but I haven't been successful like some of the... Right, like you mentioned, Hans needs a Sam Romelenko is from the world championship. Mm. Hans has won many times. What did they, what did they say about? It? Yeah, they 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 sort of seem to sort of uh, just got a constant drive uh, for for honors, haven't they? They've got like a yeah, it's deep within within. I think. Yeah, especially to have that motivation when you're going well into your forties. I think Hans did as well, or Greg mm. as well. I think it yeah. uh, takes a, a lot to do that, doesn't it? Yeah, it takes a lot for sure. Motivational wise, all sorts of reasons, body wise, mm. yeah. a lot of reasons. And that's why not many have done it. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. Mm. I sort of understand that when people are saying, would you still want to ride? But like you said, they don't realise how many times from a young kid you've done that right out to, you know, into your 40s. It's a long time. Yeah, it is a long time. Mm. And it's a lot of races. So mm. we actually, uh, not so long ago, I, I spoke to my brother. Uh, it was at the meeting in uh, in Molila. Yeah. And uh, we just said that. That we, how we can be alive still. It's exactly. amazing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. After all, all the races we've been exactly, through. Yeah. You know. There's fine so, lines in there in speedway and injuries and yeah. And some great yeah, guys have had serious injuries and stuff. You sort of think yeah. to yourself, you've had a good career, got out of it. Yeah, I remember the first uh, meeting I had in England was mm. at uh, Cradley. Oh yeah. So I came straight into uh, 
the hardest thing in England. Yeah. And uh, I had a really good meeting, I remember. I was super pumped for the meeting. And I beat, I'm sure I beat Greg and Billy and who else was in. In the first three races, I had the maximum going. Yeah. And then I had a, the biggest crash you can <laughs> imagine, stride in the steel fence at Cradley, you know, from high speed to zero. Yeah. Just in, Scary. in a second, you know. But and that that did set me back uh, mm. for a little bit. I didn't get injured or anything. It hurt me a little bit, but it was more of a mental. Yes. Yeah, Scary. A little bit. Mental. That I thought that yeah that could have killed me mm. for sure. Mm. And obviously, it's a little bit, a little bit different now, isn't it? With the air fences and a few things are obviously definitely better off for the sport. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, my dad a in the sixties and seventies, yeah. you know, people were having serious accidents on a weekly basis. Yeah, I remember this. Uh, it was in the. Do you remember Cradley or up here? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of eighties, nineties, and it was uh, where the pits was. You had the third corner there, yeah, right? Turning, yeah. And it was this crash was coming out of the fourth corner. Okay. I was going wide there, and someone came from the inside with a wheelie and just kind of crush you, yeah. hit, and then straight in the fence. And there was a post there coming out. I don't know if the tractors came out there or something. Mm. Could have been. Mm. But it was supposed there, and it was just dead stop. Rigid, yeah. <laughs> solid. And uh, another place I remember was uh, Exeter. That was a gnarly <laughs> fence. Yeah, that was a steel center for defense. That's crazy. Bad place. Steel fence. Yeah. What did you think of that track? Because it was obviously big as well. I think it was sort of. Uh, I think Swindon was second biggest to it, or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, quite rough, narrow, what I remember, narrow mm. and then very fast. And mm. yeah, because the uh, home guys used to like to go around a fence and the away riders hug the inside, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That's good. yeah, I did that so. Uh, Mikael, are you on uh, social, any social medias uh, and stuff like that? Are you on any of that? I know you've uh, still got a Facebook page I spotted. Uh, yeah, I've got like a Facebook uh, fan page or whatever. Yeah, that's it, yeah. That you can get into. But I'm, I'm not very active on uh, social media. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I sort of do my own thing here and I see the some of the riders and stuff when they come to the Grand Prix in Molilla, I see, I see a few people. That's quite fun, actually, because you see a lot of older guys as well that yeah. come there, so that, that can be quite nice. Yeah, Unfortunately, cool. I'm, I'm quite busy during those days, but uh, yeah, it's, a bit of yeah it, it's nice to catch up and mm. whatever, you know, yeah. and see the, see the lads. And, there's some fantastic riders mm. nowadays too. Mm. I gotta say. Any any other guys that you see now that sort of quite excite you to watch when they race? Is there some guys that you think, wow? They're... Yeah, but I'm I'm uh, very very impressed with uh, Janowski. Mm. I think he's fantastic. Mm. Um, like the team we have now in uh, Molilla. With uh, Doyle, Janowski, mm -hmm. Thorsell is is in there, and uh, yeah, it's uh, and then we got two fantastic Danes there as well, Jakobsen mm -hmm. and uh, Jensen, Rasmus Jensen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're they're really good riders, really good. But yeah, when I, on the world stage, I mean, it's. Uh, in the Grand Prix, it's fantastic. But I'm, I, I am, I like to see Janowski. He's good, yeah. very good. And uh, Smarslik, obviously, uh, fantastic rider. Lindgren, 
Yeah. Good. Very good. Still going. Another Wolves legend. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And because uh, obviously that Rasmus uh, Jensen, we had him at Swindon as well uh, for the last couple of years when we won the league. Oh, that's he? Yeah, he was at Swindon as well. So it was good to see Rasmus Jensen and obviously Doyle was our number one as well. But yeah, fingers crossed that Swindon comes back. Uh, it'd be a shame if it uh, gets lost to the sport as well. Yeah, that's hope so. Eh? Yeah, fingers yeah, crossed. For sure. Sure. How's it going at, the, at uh, Pool? How's it going down there? Yeah, so they they've gone down a league now um, um, for this year. Um, so they got uh, Rory Schlein's riding as their number one in the league below. <clears throat> the, uh, I think the championship they call it now, or whatever they call it now. They keep changing the names of them, but so yeah, they they they're down in there now for the first time in the lower league again now. So <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if you heard about that Somerset closed as well for this year, completely closed now. Oh, is it? Mm, that was a good race track there at Somerset as well. Quite a lot of the guys liked it there. Yeah. That's completely what about crazy. Eastbourne? How's it going there? Yeah, they're uh, <clears throat> in the lower league as well. So, yeah, they're in the lower league as well. Um, Oxford, is that still open? No, no. Oxford's yeah. closed, but there's been talk about them because the stadium still stayed there. Nothing's wrong with that. They haven't uh, closed it completely in that way. So there's still talk about potential there but obviously like Reading completely closed never never come back yeah there's, uh, <clears throat> there's a few being lost so fingers crossed and obviously Paul just come out in the press and said that they're struggling as well with this starting up in the Covid and yeah now Birmingham's just halt their racing for now because they can't continue the way it is and stuff like that so it's yeah not ideal mm. it's tough times it is mate yeah Tough times, it is, yeah. it sounds like, but uh, mm. yeah, we will we'll see what happens to it. But I'm sure, I mean, it's fantastic sport for sure. Yeah, fantastic on TV. Yeah, really nice to watch, and uh, it's a stadium type deal. And mm. but that's like the same with Swindon, where they're trying to uh, they're talking about updating the stadium. You think that it's not changed since. 1949 when it was made so mm. as you can imagine like you know all the mod cons of new stadiums and things like that that you've got your and that's still been the same since them years so yeah yes yeah. you know it needs to uh, get with the times as it were and all that what about Ipswich? yeah they're still going in the top league uh i don't know if you knew about that jason crump had come back and was racing again oh yeah i've Mm. That, yeah. yeah, he's been racing at uh, he's been racing at Ipswich again. So Chris Louis uh, still running Ipswich in the top uh -huh. league, right? And, uh, yeah, but unfortunately, uh, Crumpy come off at uh, Wolves uh, last oh, week, yeah. a couple of weeks ago and uh, broke some ribs. Um, Has it been doing good? Or yeah, he's yeah he's been getting stuck in. He's been doing all right, and he rides for uh, Plymouth as well in the league below as well. So he's been riding for them as well. Right, right. Yeah, so it's been interesting to see him come back. Yeah, that I bet. Yeah, that's been, interesting for yeah, sure. But he's, been, but he's been proper competitive again, and yeah, he's been riding. So at he means one. business. Mm, definitely, he means business crumpy. Yeah, he does. That's that's <laughs> I think I, would, I just I just see a social media post of him tonight saying that he's uh, got the speedway bike back out. So it looks like he's already looking to come back again. If he's had a few weeks off, mm -hmm. it's a bit. Of, Bit of a big crash at uh, Wolves. He was leading the race as well at the time. Right. I think it was uh, Rory Schleim was in it for Wolves. Um, and maybe the young Luke uh, Becker, the American as well. But yeah, he was winning the race at the time as well. So he's definitely mm. means business. Yeah, definitely. Oh, good. Uh, Who's the best uh, English rider apart from Ty then? Um, I would say Lambert. He just won the year. Oh, yeah, Lambert. Last year. yeah, I would say Lambert. Yeah. What about Bewley and those guys? Okay. Yeah, he's going well. He's uh, rides for Bellevue. Um, but obviously Lambert is, is opted out of England this year. So he's uh, obviously going in the GP, doing the European and obviously riding in Poland. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. He's a good rider. I know, I know him. Tidy rider as well, yeah. So he's probably the... The main one behind Ty, I would say, Lambert. Um, like you said, there's a few coming through, like Bewley. Uh, fast, young lad, rides for Bellevue. 
So, yeah. Mm. But it's not, not as much as it was, obviously, a few years back, for sure. Mm. Mm. And obviously, a lot of them don't ride here now. Lambert's not riding. Obviously, Woofy doesn't ride in the British League. Mm. So, yeah. What does that, would that help the league, do you think, if they rode or? I think it would definitely bring more crowd. Um, I think we missed out, I would say, the first year of the lockdown in COVID because we were going to have, I think Jason Crump announced he was coming back. We had uh, Nicky Pedersen was going to ride for Sheffield that had gone up into the top league, which is quite a big track as well. Decent stadium, yeah. Sheffield. Mm -hmm. I think that was quite looked forward to. And then obviously then the whole season didn't happen. So now obviously Nicky hasn't come back this year. And yeah, and obviously it's been a stop start year this year. It's been quite a late start, sort of literally last month. Um, normally, yeah. as you know, it's normally March or whatever, March, April. So it's been late start. And obviously now with the restricted crowds and stuff like that, a lot of the teams are struggling to, to make you know ends meet, including Wolves. But yeah. put out, they've put out themselves. How does it work with, do you know how it works uh, with the traveling side of how does it work with that now during the COVID? That's what I mean. I think uh, even when they started the league, a couple of the guys were obviously going over to Poland, were riding, I think, Adam Ellis, another decent yeah. English rider. He couldn't he couldn't get his flight over. And then uh, he was supposed to be riding for Sheffield, uh, Sheffield as well, and he couldn't get over. But I think generally they can travel now, most of them. Yeah. But it's still not easy, obviously. No. So not ideal. No, no, no. Hard times all round. <laughs> mm. As we all it know. Is. It is. Mm. And like I said, they've just literally said on the TV tonight, it's another month at least now before, you know, the no mass at all situation. A lot of a lot of people have had vaccines in the UK now. I've I personally have had both of mine. <clears throat> What's the situation for you guys over there? Have you had all, a lot of vaccines over there or not? Yeah, it seems to be seems to be working uh, smoothly with yeah. that. I think yeah. there's uh, when you come to the population, mm. I think most a lot of people are taking the vaccine for sure. Yeah. yeah. So th there's no problem with that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think hopefully it'll be over yeah but uh, not, I, yeah. I don't know now they're talking about this in in uh in the indian flu yeah indian. that's it yeah so uh that okay. that that's in sweden now is it yeah so okay. mm, it's starting to grow so but now mm. they're talking they're going to give you a third shot and then you'll be okay then fingers crossed well, that's again, this morning, that's isn't it? Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> That's it. Drives you mad. I think uh, now over here that you're allowed, they've reopened cinemas and with some distance inside and stuff like that. And you're allowed now into restaurants and, and pub gardens. You're allowed outside and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. <clears throat> so it's getting there, nearly there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I feel the same here. It's, it's getting a little bit better. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, I mean, I... I Personally, I can't complain too much about the situation, but I mean, I am not a speedway rider no more. So, yeah. I mean, it's hard for certain people yeah, in the, you know, whatever. Imagine all the hotels and the traveling business yeah. and all of that. It's been, yeah. been a catastrophe, I think. So, yeah, yeah let's true. hope for the best, eh? Hey? Yeah. Next month, hopefully, in the next month or so, it should be back to normal-ish. <laughs> mm, that's it. Fingers crossed. Good stuff. But, yeah, really appreciate your time, Mikhail. Really appreciate that. Enjoyed it was it. very nice to be on. Very Enjoyed nice. It, I really appreciate it, mate. Thanks very much. Good to meet you uh, personally as well. Uh, enjoyed your racing over the years, mate. Top rider, top guy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take it easy. I'll keep in touch anyway. I will do. Cheers, Mikhail. Thanks, mate. See you. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Bye. Brilliant. Top man. What a legend. Another legend of Speedway on Swedish. Legend. Another Wolves legend. I know a lot of the Wolves fans wouldn't have been on tonight, which is a shame, but obviously I knew. Uh, did only just know the other day, actually, to be fair. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have done it for that time. But uh, I know a lot of the... I'll put this recording out 
all my live uh, interviews go uh, recorded onto my YouTube channel. So I will make sure this goes out um, to the right places. So all them Wolves fans that I know that will probably be watching live on the Eurosport tonight, I believe, uh, away at Peterborough, which I'll catch up with myself later on tonight. <clears throat> so I, I only realised that a couple of days ago, otherwise I probably wouldn't have arranged it for the same time, really, to be honest. But there we go. I'd sorted out with Mikhail, so uh, he could do that time and date. So uh, we stuck to it in the end. But uh, I'll get that uh, that uh, recorded interview out for all them guys to be able to catch up with it in their own time and everything. So that's the good thing about these. Even if you can't get onto them live uh, with the lighter nights and the summer nights, now everyone's getting out a bit more with the with the COVID restrictions lifted a little bit and all that sort of stuff. So, but at least you guys can catch up with these anytime, which is always good in your own time. So, uh, yeah, just a couple of other things I was going to say as well. Uh, I've got a live interview this Thursday night, 7 p.m. UK time with American motocross legend, Mr. Mike Healy. So that would be really interesting. Another class rider over the years. And he was obviously uh, of great character as well. And uh, I think a lot of people will look forward to that one. And then uh, next Monday night, a week tonight, I will have um, another American uh, star legend uh mr sean mcconnell uh who came over to the uk in the sort of 80s rover swin and robbins uh birmingham i believe as well uh but he's well known all over the world um another great character bit of a wheelie king as well and uh he's still still riding to this day as well in america i believe so yeah that'd be a great interview as well so that'll be next monday night and i'll keep you guys all up Dated on what I'm doing speedway and motocross wise. Uh, but like I said, there's loads of that you can catch up with. Any of you guys uh, didn't know that I've got loads on my YouTube channel that you can catch uh, catch up with motocross and spear memories. If you put that into uh, YouTube or myself, Lee Ashby, you can, you can find it on there and just subscribe. You can subscribe to it for free, catch up with the interviews whenever you've got the time. If you can't catch them live and uh, yeah, there's loads on there, uh, hundreds on there now with all the, stars of all the eras so it's really cool uh hi hi buddy no worries you can catch up with it uh really mean Kelvin, funny thanks the wolves fans are in for a treat when they see this yes it's quite detailed wasn't it tonight with mikhail we went into a lot of details and uh his experiences and thoughts and uh some interesting ideas as well of what speedway needs to do as well so that was pretty cool as well so i think they'll enjoy it i'll get it into all the uh facebook groups and stuff for the walls fans and speedway fans and uh, those guys can catch up with it later on but uh, many thanks for the, everyone that come on this evening and checked it out i will speak to you all soon uh i always leave it with a quote of what my dad used to say to me um and that was it's uh, nice to be important but it's important to be nice so Good evening to you all. Good night and God bless. And uh, when I share, I'll share out this link out tomorrow and you can share it to your friends and family. I've got my Motocross and Speedway Memories Facebook group. I'm on Twitter, YouTube channel, Motocross and Speedway Memories uh, website as well. We've normally got a countdown on the front of that to the next live interview. Uh, I'm on Instagram and all that sort of stuff as well. And Ashby Robbins, I'm on Twitter and uh, Instagram and Lee Ashby on Facebook, and you can always catch up with all my stuff on there as well. Yes, let's do that, Keith. <laughs> let's get back to the 70s. If we were back in the 70s, where's me dad's thing gone? Oh, there he is. We're back in the 70s. Look, we'd have the, the old Ashby levers that Martin and my uncle used to wear. Look, there you go, look. 1972 to 78. Bless him there. So take it easy, people. I'll speak to you all soon. I will get this out there tomorrow. Ciao, Bella. Cheers.